And uh, so she made a little thing for me. And I came and wore it for about a week. I didn't wear it to church. You know, I, I was a true Zambian. Then one day in our backyard, this is the first time we actually saw these catacombs. And our yard man was up in the big tree in our backyard. He was crawling all over. And I got out there and said, Daniel, what are you doing? He says, I'm, I'm, I'm harvesting and, and picking these caterpillars. They're all over the trees. And uh, they got them together. I said, what do you do with them? Now I know. Those other pictures you saw of the lady in, up in Kitway that had those uh, caterpillars. Well, they got a whole bunch of them. And I, Melford said, why don't you try one? And I'm not uh, just a thought of eating bugs, okay? Now, if any of you want to be brave, huh? Right here? If you want a snack, I have some real caterpillars. Television about 
Life expectancy over the world, the highest life expectancy is in Japan. That might be because of food and fish. America's 76, 76 years old. Zambia is 36. We live twice as long as an average Zambian. Okay? So, let's move on. Zambians have great physical needs. That's just what we're talking about. Very little medical help. Very simple things could be taken care of if they could have the medicine. Big clinics. Sponsored by the government. Many people will come in, there'll be this line here goes way out here. There's probably over a hundred people waiting to see the, the and there's no medical doctor at this clinic. They're just uh, uh, nurses and they come for all kinds of things. And many times they simply do not have the money uh, and nor do they have the medication to take care of the problems. This is a ladies ward. What's really different when you go there if you're a lady, you have to feed your own family. They do not provide food. But when Marianne and I went in here to see some of our folks, oh, we, I was so... I've been a chaplain for many years in different hospitals. And uh, our hospitals are very clean. When we walked into this, the smell was so bad, my wife and I, we could, we could hardly not throw up. It was awful. And uh, a lot of people, when they go to the hospital, a lot of them don't come back. These is the missionary team that we have in Zambia. These are our missionaries that we work together. This is Jim and Hope Smith. He works with the Compassion Ministry, the orphans, the young mothers, the destitute. Uh, this is Jerry and Judy Byrne. Judah and Aunt Neil, have a seat. He uh, right has now. been there for 25 years. Planted three uh, church plants. Okay. Go back. Okay. We'll have to talk a little faster. This is our co-worker John and Marilyn. He also is a foreman on the ranch. He was a professional pig rancher in Minnesota. Had a ranch of. 4,000 pigs sold his entire business and totally financed his own self as a missionary. Uh, this is Susie. She works with us in the children's ministry. This is one of the single girls. Works with uh, a different all of us in different children's ministry. This young uh, older lady uh, lives in Lusaka. Uh, and she works in literacy. She helps uh, people learn English. Okay, Martha Barrett. This is our team in Grace Baptist Church's showground. This started in October of 2007. I am a senior teaching pastor. Susie directs our uh, children and youth, works with our children and youth. John is the associate pastor. He's the pastor of evangelism and youth. Marilyn and Marianne and Susie all work with, uh, uh, Susie works with kids and uh, young teens. Marianne and, and uh, Marilyn work with the older ladies in Bible study and things like that. Zambians also have great spiritual needs, and that's why we're there. God sent us to Zambia to carry out the Great Commission, to lead people to Christ, to baptize and teach them, to be obedient to the Word of God and obedience to the Lord's Great Commission. Zambians have great spiritual needs, and we're there to help meet those needs. Uh, part of our ministry is working in church. This is our first meeting. started in October 2007. We had 16 people. Half of them were missionaries. And uh, we rent a house there in Showground. And uh, <clears throat> we've been working there. Uh, this was a service as it began to grow in December of, of uh, uh, 207. It's our song leader, Glenn. This is one of the beauty that sings for us, beautiful voice. You can see our church beginning to grow, children beginning to come. We started an annual Christmas dinner and outreach in uh, uh, December of 2007. We've had it three times before we came home. Actually, we weren't at the last one. But they prepare food, cabbage, and onions, and tomatoes, and things, and we provide the meat and rice, and we invite people to come. We have a great time of fellowship for Christmas. Uh, this is uh, the bathroom for the church. <laughs> So Marianne tries to go to the bathroom before she comes to church. 
okay? This is the ladies cooking and uh, providing. This is one of the, the braziers that they cook with charcoal right there. That's a good one. The ladies cooking. See the braziers? There's a pot. There's a brazier. There's charcoal under here. We're all eating. And we cook up about uh, 20 pounds of rice. Cook uh, mince, which is hamburger. And we have the, uh, I love cooked cabbage there. And uh, have lots of people that come. It's a great time of fellowship. Question is, 20 pounds of rice for one day, he said? Yeah, just that one, that one meal for everybody. Okay. We've had several baptisms. This is our first baptism. It's the first person that I baptized and uh, led him to Christ after I was there about two months. He's now training in the Bible school to be a pastor. This is Milford. This is Glenn. He was the town drunk. God saved him, changed his life. He's now our song leader in our church and one of the students in the Bible school. This is another baptismal service. We had a fine young man, Navy, Gloria, and Vaida, one of our teens. And uh, uh, Vaida gave her testimony. She came to know Jesus at a teen camp. Just notice that, honey. Yes, needs to be capitalized. You know, I, we just saw that. So, and had a baptismal service. Now, you know, just hold that one. Well, we'll go through this. Uh, the last, uh, our first two baptismals, we've had it in December and it rained. So we're out in the rain. We asked this last one, 209, Lord, give us a sunny day. And he broke the sunshine from rain for about three hours. As soon as we got done with the baptismal service, it poured. This is Moses, a young man that was led to Christ, had the privilege to lead to Christ. He gets baptized. He's a Bible school student now, first year. He went home and led his brother uh, to Christ, Meshach. This is a young lady who got saved in the morning service. We have old-fashioned uh, invitations. People raise hands, and we deal with people that raise hands. This is the group that uh, recently got baptized, the last one we had on the first Sunday in December. We are making disciples of all nations. We're reaching out to our community by being friends. Mary Ann here is out uh, with some of the ladies in the church. They, this is how they sell, little things they sell, nuts, vegetables, to try to make a little bit of money. This is a young man. Pray for him that he be saved. He's very open to the gospel. He's my uh, guy that runs a, a copy, a machine, a business, and uh, Martin, and he does all my copying for classes at school. Very special little thing, you know? Things that you never think about. Uh, we had two Zambian friends, the, the couple and their family that live with us, and then the foreman of the ranch, he is married, has five girls, from 13 down to about three. And we had them over. We have a little uh, a little fire pit in the back of our yard. This is the fence, so it's inside of our yard. And we cooked marshmallows for the first time. They never had ever had a marshmallow. And then we told them now we're going to have a weenie roast, okay? And oh, they love that. And then Mary Ann's teaching some of the girls their, 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 uh, how to cook. And they can, the problem with cooking there for them, they don't have stoves and ovens, so they don't bake. You don't bake on a brazier. So most of them don't know how to cook, but you've got to have a stove, and Mary Ann's bringing the ladies in and teaching them. We reach out to our community. I was a Rotarian here in Pleasanton for 18 years before I went to Africa, and I'm working with the Rotary Club of Choma there. This is a wheelchair ministry that we had out in the community. We're working to help Shapani Clinic. And uh, this is also a ministry. We have a very wonderful ministry out in the prison. These men here are, are privileged. They go to an open prison. That means they have anywhere from three to six to eight months left in their prison sentence. And they have earned the right to come out into the open. There's no wires or uh, a confinement. They come out and they're open. The superintendent of uh, the uh, prison ministry has invited us to come. They're wide open, our preacher boys. This is a couple of our students from uh, the Bible school come out and they preach. This is uh, uh, one of our, our, our men that is preaching, Billy. We also have a great, great ministry there in orphans. This is the orphans from our church that came out to this orphan camp that we had. And uh, Jim Smith ran that, and there was over 100 orphans that came. 65% of the population of our church are kids that are 12 years and under. 
Great children's ministry. Our teens are trained to teach the children in their ministry. And this is our kids. Look at all of them. Happy to come. And we have a wonderful ministry. I said 60% up there. I guess it was 60. This is a teen rally that we had between three churches. They learned uh, uh, and were quizzed over the book of Ephesians. And they did really well. These are some of our teens. They, they sing. Over there, Africans, they sing so beautiful a cappella. They don't have any instruments. And they sing so beautiful. I just love to hear them sing. They really do. This is a teen rally that we had. I mean, teen, our teen group. We just recently heard, uh, just recently got an email letter that they had, like, what was it, 22 teens or so in a recent uh, teen meeting that they have every Saturday. So our teen ministry is going this ages uh, 13 to, uh, to 19. This is the ladies' ministry that Mary Ann and, and, uh, and Marilyn work with and Susie. This is a Bible study. And then this is the thing that really has developed. We've learned about uh, opportunities to learn how to make bags out of plastic bags. And they crochet them. And we found out that we can, if possible, they make really nice ones. And we're working right now to have an outlet to, to get involved with some craft business or store in America and market these. This can mean so much to these ladies. These ladies here, right here, these three ladies, this is what, Nacy? This is what, honey? Patricia and Betty. These ladies are very, very poor. And they can make these bags. And each one of these ladies that doesn't even make 50,000 kwacha a month, not even close to that, by making these bags, they can earn up to 100, 150, 200,000 kwacha a month if we could just have a market here in America to sell these bags. Okay? And uh, it's a great opportunity. You got a question back there? Yes. Yeah, we got them right here to sell. Okay? We're going to sell them on donation basis. Okay? But developing leaders. These are the young men that I have sitting up front. They're brand new. A lot of them are new Christians. Some of them are not. Glenn leads songs. This is Melford. He's been called to preach. He's preaching here. Right now he's teaching my adult Sunday school class in our church. He's just finished two years of Bible school. This is Larkin. He's a layman. He'd never be a pastor, but a good layman, a good deacon, good teacher. This is uh, Navy. He's going to be a first-year student, fine man. This is the young man here that had great potential. You can pray for Stanford. Uh, I don't have time when I see this thing, but just to mention, uh, it had to discipline him from the church for ungodliness, and we're waiting for him to repent. A lot of potential for the Lord. Right now, he's not doing well. And so we have these men up front. You know who this is back here, don't you? My wife plays a little sitsapha, what do you call that thing? A little keeper board. And we sing, we're teaching them to sing choruses and hymns from books that we've got from churches in America. Our last Sunday at Grace Baptist Church, Joe Brown, December the 13th. We pick up kids every day, every weekend, and we call it the bush car. The kids in Africa, they call it the God car. We've had as many as 18 people in our band going to church on Sunday morning. And uh, this is Sunday School opening. Here's Susie and the children. And we're, we're renting a house right now in this living room. And it's jam-packed, about 80 people. This is our farewell Sunday. And when you're going home as a missionary, which we did, and we left uh, December the 14th. It was our last Sunday, December the 13th. And we have a tradition of singing to the missionaries going home on furlough. God be with you till we meet again. We have a custom there that's really nice. When you come out one at a time, you get in a, what we call a greeting line. So you greet everybody. And then we do something special. It's just our ideas. We can afford to do it right now. We bring candy. We have a basket. And they get to have one piece of candy as they go out. Some of these kids and will never, ever be able to do that. So we do that a little thing at church. We have a greeting line. This was our last Sunday there. Grace Baptist Church. It's been kind of special. My first church that I pastored was Grace Baptist Church, uh, Paso Robles, California. And the Zambian folks named the church. I didn't name it. Baptist Bible College and Institute of Choma. That was the main reason we went out to, 
teach men to become pastors. And uh, we uh, uh, have seen some great, great results in there. Establishing uh, the school to be a four-year school. Our school building was a former tobacco ranch and farm and barn. And we've been able to remodel it. God's people have given so much to this. Remodeled the whole thing. It looks beautiful. But it didn't all look beautiful all at once. A little bit at a time. Different people gave to this so miraculously here in America. We wanted to go through the designed entry. We used to come from the barn side over there. It looked awful. And we were able to clean this up. Here's Billy. He's a, a trained carpenter, a general contractor. They knocked out, put in the new gate. Now here is, a, a, they had to build the septic tank for our toilet. And they dug that all by hand, no machines, by shovel. And here's our toilet. It's coming in, coming in. And it even looks better than this now because when they got it all in, we recently had the floor painted and it really looks nice. They put in a little kitchen so our students can come in during uh, class, breaks between class. And over there, they, they can't afford to buy and drink coffee. They drink tea all the time. Phase three uh, of the building was uh, uh, to finish this large room. And so we had uh, Billy's crew come in and put a ceiling in it. And then we had uh, desks made for this large room, and we were able to paint the floors. This is the, the main room now, the large room. This is the library. And this building now looks very, very nice for school. It really does. Then in the last thing, we wanted to paint the entire building. So we hired one of our students who does this, and they painted the whole thing. It took three coats of paint to paint this. And then we had a sign built by a company downtown that builds these nice signs. And the building looks so wonderful. God has really provided for that. We thank God for that. A wonderful place to meet. We're, building, we're developing both buildings and believers to the glory of God. This was a day of registration. See this back here, ladies? These are two girls. And we've had as many as three girls. And at one time, registered 80% of our students are able to attend because of uh, your gifts to the scholarship form. And I uh, want to thank you, Richard. Richard Peterson. A lot of the students have gone to school because of you. And uh, great blessing, Richard. Thank you so much. He's given substantially to our scholarship fund, and many of our young people appreciate that they're in school because people have given to that fund. Here I am. I get to teach a lot of times sitting down. Got all my books ready for class that day. And uh, we have each day, we have school. We go from 8 o'clock to 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Each day we have two periods of two and a half hours each. Here there. This is a, a one class. And these are our teachers. And uh, we're teaching part time. It's one of the things I, a uh, hard part of teaching is grading papers. <laughs> and and uh, working up the final grade. At the end of the year, we have just a week before graduation, we have got a tradition going. We have the end of the year luncheon. I barbecue up some chicken, American style. <laughs> And uh, they come, they love it, they eat it all, and then my home church, Sunrise Valley Baptist Church, I'm sitting home to my pastor, a uh, list of books I want for the students that year, and they sit and all, oh, they, they, you know they come, they like to eat, but you know the main reason they come to this luncheon? To get the books. Books are so valuable to them. And here they are with their books. Books are such a treasure. My brother Doug also has given substantially for books that I give to my students in classes. And here they are. Here they are with some books for first year theology. Here's some books that I gave to, to Billy. Uh, some fine books by uh, uh, Unger, Bible Handbook, Bible Atlas. Uh, they just love the books. Our goal was to redo the school in our first term from a third year to a four year school. And we've had two graduations, one in 208, one in 209. This is Barry preaching on our last graduation, encouraging the students to finish the race, the younger students. 
You work hard and finish graduation. I preached on preaching the word. And here's our recent graduates here. Our first graduates right here out of the four-year term. This is uh, Harrison Bonda. He's been a pastor in Choma, pastoring a church plant that Barry planted for over 12 years. This is his associate pastor, Joshua. There was also another uh, graduate that's not pictured in the picture. And we had three graduates. All of them are teaching right now in the school starting in January. Here's our teachers. Here's Joshua in the Shoma. Here's a, a veteran pastor that we called. He's been pe teaching already part-time. He had a three-year certificate from a school in Livingston. Uh, excuse me, three-year certificate of a school in Osaka. And Paul Bond and Paul and Pastor Harrison. All three of these men have graduated with their four-year degree in pastoral ministries, and they are currently teaching along with uh, Barry Burnham this term. They'll be teaching until I return. So that was a great goal that was accomplished. Could you hold just a second? Yes. We have a few questions. Uh, first, someone asked about, is English the language used when you teach? Yes. People have to be proficient in English. In the church, we interpret every time. We preach in English and interpret in tongues. But in school, you have to be proficient in English. Okay. Hold on a second. Okay, so the question is related to, oh, it's not a question, it's a compliment. She's saying it's very good that you're teaching people to uh, be pre uh, preachers and witnesses within their own country within Africa. Well, that's the whole goal of our mission. We teach people so that they can turn around and teach others in time. Okay, third question here. Was, in Africa, in Zambia, uh, when you see the community and you enter and there's no medicine, and you see the trees. Um, oh, very bitter trees. People who are sick then go uh, to the bitter tree to get the medicine. Or do they go to the hospital to get the medicine? That's the question. So I guess it's herbal medicine. Is it used out in the country? or do they go to We're not familiar with any of that. Our people don't go to the village and get herbal medicine. There's very little knowledge of that. We still have a lot of sorcery and witchcraft, and a lot of things they're told to do by the witch doctor really are not good. They have to go to the clinics. And a lot of times the government doesn't supply the medicine in the clinics to help what is really needed to overcome the disease. And the second part of his question, sorry. But uh, he says, I know up until now, because in the villages, they have not set up the hospitals, of course, and uh, in the international communities, of course, they do have the hospitals, uh, but the old grandfathers and grandmothers who are in the villages um, it's are experienced with how to, to chop off the right kind of bitter things that will heal you from the trees, and he says that's what I was... What we've heard, see, I don't know very many villagers that I'm familiar with, and I don't have a wide knowledge of people way out, okay? We have heard that there is knowledge. I, I, for example, just in America, have studied a lot about the American Indian, and they were very good at knowing about herbs and plants and things that had a lot of healing elements to it. But I don't see much of that in the areas we're ministering. Okay? They go to the clinics. Okay, last question here. Jesse's just asking, are you finished in Africa or are you headed back? I think your prayer is going to head towards that, right? No, I committed 10 years to Africa. And what that amounts to is three terms. I finished one. I have two left. The goal that I have in 10 years is to finish this church and see it totally self-supporting and with its own pastor and also see the school where we have enough Zambian men and, and other uh, missionaries who are teaching in this school. And that, in our estimation, we can train some good Zambian teachers who are going to have to look to the future to 
probably develop and mentor a missionary who will be the director. Okay. So I have two more terms. Actually what happens is what's happened. We go out for two years, four months. We come back.